we are back in business y'all for another facade video so somebody left me a comment about how to design skinny or thin or narrow facades and i can see where this person is coming from because skinny or narrow facades can be quite challenging and quite difficult because as we talked about in my previous video about the glow up facade is that when you have a narrow or a small project or a skinny building it's just too many constraints because you don't have the luxury of a lot of surface area to play with or like to push and pull geometry to add things to like add vertical elements whatever it's just you don't have that and you have to kind of outsmart the shape that you're kind of stuck with and that's not an easy task so in today's video i'm gonna go over a few examples because to be honest i've never designed a narrow facade so what i did is that i compiled a lot of pictures i went on pinterest and i literally downloaded almost every single one and i what i like to do is i like to analyze and dissect designs to kind of really understand and get in the head of the designers that did those facades and I boiled it down to five or six principles that kept repeating because I started seeing a pattern after a while and I'm like, hmm, I see what this designer did because somebody else did it. You know, similarly or like, but they just changed the, like the materiality of it, but the big idea is there. So I'm gonna share my screen and, you know, kind of like do our usual analysis and um, hope that will help you, you know, kind of choose what you want to do with your design facade if you're designing something skinny or something in a narrow facade so let's get started so the biggest challenge in designing a facade is to fight two things we are fighting flatness and we are fighting lack of dynamic if you can just get rid of the flatness get rid of the lack of dynamic then you have a good designed facade the other thing that i want to cover is that you know so just so we all agree is that a narrow facade or a skinny building is basically any building that the height equals twice the width of it so what you end up with is usually a a vertical rectangle um and you know again if you haven't watched my glow up facade please go watch that so you can understand my process of analyzing facades of course every single facade that we're gonna go over has something to do with design principles again design principles is literally the, your savior and whenever you get stuck go back and review those and see how you can implement it i'm not gonna focus as much on that because i do have a specific video for that so i'm gonna link it here but again i'm just gonna mention it here and there so you kind of know where the designers are coming from so the first trick or the first tip that i would give you if you want to design your skinny facade is something i called a box within a box and i just i'm coming up with these design names um i've you know nobody taught me this i haven't read it anywhere this is just my own analysis so don't go around and tell people box within a box design because this is just something i came up with so the first example here we have this facade and i thought this facade was pretty interesting because of a few things but the main thing that we are focusing here is again the box within a box so if you notice the first thing here is we have a kind of a main box that is in the foreground um, and then the designer added another box that is a small box so so here's a design principle question for you so what does a box within a box do actually gives contrast because you have the big box and you have the small box because um, if you only have one big box then nothing is kind of um, fighting against it or nothing is giving that um visual interest so the box within a box that already kind of fight in your flatness you no longer have a flat facade because you have the background and you have a foreground besides that the designer here also did something pretty interesting and pretty cool is that they added arches and the arches what they do is they give depth when you have depth again you don't have flatness and also it gives this um kind of a a movement or kind of something is is moving backwards or something that is you know receding and i think that's a pretty good design element because the eye is not you know just looking at something static um and besides that they also played very nicely with the materiality i'm not sure what this white thing is but i think it has kind of a modern look and they mixed it with brick and um i i feel like it's it's a beautiful facade so the second example of the box within a box is this one right here if we go and um add the our main box and then we have a, another small box again that gives the depth and you um you just fought flatness and you don't have that anymore the other the other interesting thing here is that not only 
there is a foreground and a background, the designer also shifted the boxes, giving it a kind of a movement or kind of you know, like, like sliding. And then what does that achieve? It's just combating the lack of dynamic or the static look. And besides that, they also came up with this nice uh, gray screen that breaks that stucco or that just white um, concrete facade or whatever material that is. So that's also a pretty cool example. So we have another example here is um, same idea is we have our main box and then we have our small box. Uh, here there is something interesting that I want to mention. Not only there is the contrast of the big box and the small box um, background foreground, there's also something interesting in terms of the big box. So if you notice there is something that that designers can do to give a sense of depth to to give a sense of depth to the facade and that is by adding these little corners that make the facade look like it has depth and that adds a nice touch to a small skinny facade that doesn't have necessarily the luxury to go you know either sideways or in terms of height but you go in terms of um, so if this is the Y axis, the X axis, you're going in terms of like the Z axis, which is the depth axis. So that kind of give a, a nice uh, three dimensional uh, look to the facade. Now um, that's for the box within a box. So now we're going to move to our second design trick. And I call that again, left, right, right, left. Sorry, these names are sound funny. They sound silly, but seriously, this just makes sense to me. And I feel like this is the best way to kind of explain it. So now let's look at left, right, right, left. The left, right, right, left is basically trying to most of the time fight lack of dynamic. It's not necessarily about fighting the flatness or giving depth, but it's more of like kind of have a movement or guide the eye through the facade. So if you notice here, we have this side here, which is the left side where the wood is. And then we have a more of a, a landscape or more of a horizontal um, design element. And then they just keep on going like into a kind of a zigzag mode. So um, the, the pink is, you know, boop, boop, and then here, and then here. And then for the, um, the, the wood balcony, then you get it here and then you have it here. So you're just kind of going like the green, 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 green. And then you got pink, 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 pink. They're kind of alternating between the wood balcony and um, that concrete white block. So it's kind of staggered. And that gives a nice, you know, visual interest um, to the facade. So let's look at this um, other example here. Um, we got um, this wood element here. And then it just keeps on moving to the side like that. And there's like a dance, like toot, 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 toot. Um, and then you got the window here, which is I'm gonna cover in green. And then you got the window to the side, and then you got a window to the side, and a window to the side. And then they just keep from repeating that um, to the um, other windows as well. Uh, let's look at another example. So this is another example that also has that staggered, that zigzag or, alternate, or um, alternating windows. So you got the window there, window there, window there, and window there. Um, and then you have this white, um, concrete, white, white, and then another white here. Um, so, and this last one is not necessarily a skinny facade per se, but I think that had kind of an interesting zigzag and alternating element to it. So between that and the white, and then you get the white here again, and the wood here, and then the white here, and the wood here. And this um, this example also has that cutout uh, 3D that I mentioned earlier for that, you know, top facade here um, of these guys on the sides. And you can notice that it's quite nicely done here. It's It, it's, it looks pretty clean to me. I don't know, I like this facade actually. It's one of my favorite. Um, now, moving on to the third design tip that I kind of saw quite um, a few times is the cutout design. So where the designer, um, um, the designers have this mass or this narrow skinny facade, and then they just kind of start slashing 
um, shapes out of the facade. Now, I don't really know if usually they have, you know, a certain pattern or a certain, you know, method or um, what's the word, a certain logic to where the cutouts are, but I think it gives a really, really dynamic facade. I think out of all the options, this is the most dynamic facade. So this one is nicely done because the cutout is kind of the balcony. And then you can see how it's just kind of, it's carved out. Um, and then you have your railing here and I, I think it looks pretty cool. It also has some element of the zigzag or the left, right, right, left, because you can see the, um, the shapes are, or the cutouts are alternating. Um, and then there is another example here, which is more on the bigger scale because now the whole floor has the ceiling illusion. Because when you think about it, this is not very structurally or proportionally involved. The line here is mostly just the ceiling. It's not, sorry, what is that? It's not a lot happening. It's just that. So what you do is basically just have a ceiling and then have a continuous line that goes inside and it cuts the ceiling it gives it the illusion that you're like doing some really interesting geometry but it's not that inter you know not, it's not that interesting but it's not that complex that's what i'm trying to say but it is very interesting because you don't have to sacrifice a lot of space it looks functional because you know you didn't really waste your your balcony you still have the the whole view unlike this previous one where you feel like part of the balcony is kind of hidden behind this uh the mass uh, but this one is, uh, I think this was pretty clever. What does it do that, man? Then you have the line there, and then you have the line going that way, and then that way, and then you have the line going that way. It also has a zigzag effect, but um, I would call this more of the cutout because it looks like the ceiling is just slashed, or um, there's more of a geometry involved, which is not really the case. Uh, here is a another one where there's also again the um, cutout effect. Again, the cutout it gives a really three dimensional look to the facade because if you notice, there's always a line kind of like going inside, um, and it's just very you know like sharp and dynamic and you know just happening. There's just a lot going on. Um, uh, here is another facade um, with the cutouts. Again, you can always notice these slashed lines. Uh, there's that um, yeah I think uh, I don't know this 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 right here kind of looks static to me why did that become pink all of a sudden but yeah it looks pretty flat this this um, triangle here but but overall the facade looks good um, here's this one I don't know how you know practical this is but it's it's a good example to look at it's something worth um, noting uh, it looks like it's kind of AI generated but I don't know so yeah, that's uh, pretty much the third concept. Moving on to the fourth design tip is the continuous strip. So the continuous strip is basically an element that starts at the bottom or at the top and it does not break. It just keeps on going, keeps on going throughout the entire facade. And it gives a guidance to the eye to just kind of look throughout the entire facade. Um, and this example, they have this wood element that you can see it just goes on like like that that it just stop doing this pink thing man it just keeps on going like that like that like that like that um and it also has you know when it, once it gets to the balcony it becomes this glass and i think it's nice to just kind of break it otherwise it will be too chunky and too heavy so it was kind of clever to just add that slit of glass to give it a, a little breather um at each floor so that's one example for the continuous strip. There's another continuous strip. This one has the continuous strip, but I this is not necessarily my favorite because um, it still looks flat to me, to be honest. Um, you know, you got these U-shapes, uh, strips, but I feel like this facade could have been a little better because, yeah, this still looks flat to me, so. But um, anyways, so yeah, you know, if you notice, it also has a zigzag effect because there's the U shape here and the U shape here, U shape here, U shape here. Yeah, because honestly, I didn't even notice that before when I was, you know, looking for the photos and analyzing them. I just noticed that because if you see, they all share something because there just isn't that much to do with a skinny facade. You have to, you know, just you have these six or or five tips, design tips, and you just have to like shuffle them. 
um, and combine them a certain way that looks good for your purpose or for your design. So now we are moving to the fifth design tip and I call this the rule of two thirds. And I've seen this rule of two thirds being used in a lot of different shapes, not necessarily just skinny facades. And there is just something about not breaking something in the middle because symmetry is not dynamic. Symmetry is very static. It's, it's very expected. You have something, you break it in the middle, this side looks identical to this side, and that's about it. You know, there is nothing interesting, there is nothing exciting. Symmetry is beautiful when it's done in you know, like classical design or something historic. You know, if you notice, you know, most of old buildings really, really religiously followed symmetry and that's beautiful, but it's not really something that you can do in a skinny facade symmetry. So you have to break that symmetry. So the rule of two thirds is basically you take your um, vertical rectangle and you break it into three parts. So, so you get the two part here um, that has a certain design that is kind of consistent and then you have the one third here that is doing its own thing and that way it's not too symmetrical it's not too static it's just it breaks it just it breaks down the facade nicely um and the same thing here you can notice that they did the two third on this side with this balcony and then the one third on this side like this and i really urge you to try the rule of two third on any design facades whatever whether you have a long horizontal building or if you have a square or if you have a rectangle skinny it doesn't matter it always works it always works and start noticing it in designs and, and you will and you will learn how to implement it so that is for our rule of two thirds and now we're gonna move to our sixth rule which i kind of debated whether to include it or not in this video because it was more on the lazy side of the design but i just want to give it a mention um, and that is shading system so the shading system is basically just a screen that you just stick to your facade and it doesn't matter whether your facade is flat or not flat this screen does all the work for you and you basically don't have to do anything with the geometry the proportions or apply any design principles it's the easy way out basically uh, you can get a little bit fancy with it on like this uh, parametric design here but uh, most of these um, facade examples are pretty le are, are pretty flat you know here this one is this one giant box and you know they added this screen which is like the main focal point so they tried to kind of you know like give it some depth by doing um, this there you know like that but it's not doing much it's still pretty flat to me this one is you know super flat it has a screen with some you know random windows thrown here and there or whatever cutouts of the screen again i don't know if there is a logic behind it um but it's definitely a lazy way to design a skinny facade and um yeah that was the last example so so pretty much those are all the design methods that i was able to find for a skinny facade um there is uh, you can mix and match between all the designs or you can choose to just, you know, go with one and stick with that. You, again, you can always play with materiality, you can play with contrast, you can play with proportions, with hierarchy, um, you can play with planters. Uh, this is a good um, example of hierarchy, you know, the box is really, you know, the focal point, you really notice it. If you notice, this has the uh, stucco here, there is a, a rough concrete finish look, there is the steel beams going across. Um, yeah, so there are a few things that you can do to achieve a successful narrow facade. And um, that's pretty much it. That's all I can uh, tell you about skinny facades. Again, these are not my designs. I have not designed a skinny facade before. These are just designs that I found on Pinterest and you know, they can easily be replicated. Um, I don't know who designed this to kind of give them credit, but um, please, if you do know the designers, uh, please let me know and I can give them credit in the description below. So yeah, we just covered basically all the uh, six design elements that you can apply for your skinny facades. Um, I hope this was helpful and I hope it can kind of elevate or give some visual interest to your design. And um, I will see you in the next one. Bye!